minimum wage, labor and wage scheme was known as talks and yesterday governors senators reps should also earn sixty two thousand says for them backer. I am Bola Oba this is plus politics. Minimum wage, labor and wage stimulus was not as talks end today. As the labor lead, as the leaders of Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress are with President Bola Tinubu's decision on their 250000 offer, the negotiations over a new minimum wage between the federal government and organized labor are anticipated to come to an end on Monday or today. The federal government the organized private sector and labor agreed on 62,000, while the Tripartite Committee on National Minimum Wage finished its meeting last Friday. Last Friday, labor requested 250,000 naira. In a statement, the Nigerian Governors Forum asserted that the minimum salary beyond 60,000 naira was unsustainable. Labor leaders who wished not to be mentioned informed Plus TV correspondents on Sunday, and the parties were awaiting the president's decision on the recommendations put out by tripartite committee. Plus TV was told that the labor leaders will gather as the National Assembly Council, and that depending on the president's input, the decision about the strike will be made upon their return from Geneva. The president gave. Wally Edu, the finance minister, instructions on Tuesday to expedite the talks by presenting the financial consequences of the new minimum wage within two days. The executive director of Lock Stella Leadership Foundation, Reverend Father George Omaku Eusani, has accused the nation's political leaders of running an economic apartheid regime against the poor. Similarly, the outspoken Catholic priest, H.G.K. Mbaka, has called for governors and members of the National Assembly to receive the proposed 62,000 naira minimum wage, echoing the demands of organized labor. The cleric's comments came in response to the recent nation nationwide strike by the Nigerian Labor Congress NLC and Trade Union Congress TUC over the federal government's failure to implement a new minimum wage. In a separate interview, Senator Naidun Boko, who represents Delta North, proposed a wage of 100,000 naira and provided his rationale. Please take a listen. I have been sick of this controversy over living wage or minimum wage. And I believe that something is seriously wrong with the heads of many of our leaders. Yes. How can you go to sleep in good conscience and come out to be debating? I hear people on TV. I watch people on TV. Experts, economic experts, corporate executives, government officials who are taking home more than a million in a month. And they are there arguing that 60,000 or over will destroy the economy. It's not sustainable. How wicked. You give 60,000 to a poor worker, for his, a poor worker who may have a family of two or three or four, for his feeding, for his accommodation, for his house rent, for his medical care, for his children's school fees. How wicked, how blind, how can we do that? And we think that God will bless our country. We think that it is by bringing a new national anthem for God to bless our country. How can you commit this crime against humanity? For me, this is a crime against humanity. My dear friends, I see this as a new form of apartheid. Nigeria is the mo one of the most unequal societies in the entire world. Let me warn those in the tripartite committee of government. Let me warn that it is in the course of nature that when a predator, a predator continues to devour the very resources that the predator needs for his own sustenance, 
nature will take out the predator in order to have equi equilibrium, in order to have a measure of equilibrium. Nature is about balance, you know. If we decide to give a uh, labor people 60,000 or, or 62,000 hair, why not generalize it to a House Assembly members, to senatorial members, to uh, House Arrest members, to our governors, all of them are civil servants. Are they not? Yeah. Yeah. So if all of them are civil servants, why are these people slaves? Have they come to serve who? Because like, we cannot imagine why somebody can be amassing billions and billions and billions, sitting allowance, newspaper allowance, wardrobe allowances, vehicle allowances, and what they call um, say suffering allowances or what? Huh? Suffering allowances. So the people that should have such allowance should be the poor masses in the villages. If a teacher, how much are they being paid for those who are grooming our children for us? How much are they being paid? Our nurses, how much are they being paid? Our doctors, how much are they being paid? Let us be realistic. Our civil servants that wake up from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they wake up early and come back late. How much are they being paid? and look at the level of inflation in the country. How are we becoming sincere? And all of us should know we are not sincere. So I am pleading with the government that a, a stitch in time can save nine. It's a matter of handling the bull by the horn, tactfully, but very, very speedy. Because if they are not careful, this crisis of a thing, can be hijacked and nobody will know the repose effect. If they succeed in doing that, everybody will be endangered. If the government now will go on strike, labor will say, don't come out. No vehicle will move. Nobody will sell petrol. If we decide to give a labor... Joining us is an economics analyst, Bola Jede. Also joining us is a finance professional, Opa Ulua Taiwo. A development analyst based in the UK, first us to Kumbo. Gentlemen, welcome, welcome to Plus Politics. Yeah, thanks for Hello, having me. Okay. Yeah, good good uh, to be here today. Hello, Jade, how would you want to uh, how would you want to start? What what's your opening salvo going to look like or sound like? Well, I, I think we are turning very serious matter into jokes. Um, the issue of wage negotiation is a global affair. It's not a Nigerian affair. And there are standards, there are expectations about how to go about wage negotiation. Um, I, I think the joke started with labor itself when they demanded for one million as a minimum wage. From 1 million, it went to 650, 650, it went to 490, 490, it has gone to 250. When you're presenting, when you're making the case for a minimum wage, it has to be based on certain things. And those things are not supposed to be able to change from 1 million to, 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 to 250. So it's a sign of unseriousness on the side of labor, on one part. On the other part, you see government also playing games like. Um, we are willing to do more than 60,000. So we are willing to offer more than 60,000, ended up being 62,000. It sounds like a joke. Then we have for that. Mbaka had also complicated it when he said, oh, as the senators to also take 60,000. Of course, wages are based on the value placed on the labor. So the, the people you are asking to take 60,000, even if they are not senators, do not like 60,000 because of the skills and things that they have acquired over the years. So I think we need to approach this thing with the seriousness it deserves. Wage negotiation is a serious matter. This is what we think it should be. This is the reason for determining what we think it should be. And then we all come together, agree on something that is a win-win situation, and we move on. Enough of the theatrics that is going on in okay. that space. Let me go to Taiwo. Taiwo. Your opening salvo, please. Oh, all right. Uh, thank you for having me. The Nigerian Labour Congress, uh, for me, I have never been on their parts. Their parts are my own parts, and some of us can never be on the same parallel line. We are always 
the two parallel line that can never meet. Why do I say so? Like my other uh, senior colleague does rightly posit here right now. There are indicators, there are indices, and there are uh, calculations that you put in place before you talk about minimum wage or wage and allowances. For a civil servant, the Nigerian Labour Congress are not in isolation. They are under what we call the International Labour Organization, that is ILO. And under ILO, there are percentages, there are calculations for wages and salaries in every nation, and even in the global, uh, in the global village. If we are moving away from 30,000, what is the percentage we are going to move to? That is what labor should be bringing on table. And that is why I'm not too comfortable with Labour Congress. You cannot be having conversation with the government of 21st century without adequate data. You must have adequate data. If you're asking for, uh, for instance, uh, 495,000 Naira as minimum wage, the question is, where is the money coming from? Is it coming from PMS? Is it coming from import duties? Is it coming from our foreign reserve? Where is the money coming from? And if you are saying that uh, we want to pay that amount, if government should accept, are you not aware that immediately you make that announcement, my neighbor that says, Gary, we increase the one pound, one plastic of Gary, which is currently selling at 4,000, 4,500. The old woman, we increase it immediately to 10,000 error. So what are we doing? Okay. We are okay. killing the economy. Thank you. Okay, thank you. let me go to Tokumo uh, uh, and uh, we'll do the road today. Tokumo, uh, it, it will be very interesting to, to hear your opening struggle. Is Tokumo still on? Okay, uh, in the absence of uh, having Tokumo on, um, Bala, uh, let's do this. I must say that I hear you now. Okay, uh, Tokumo, yes, I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. How would you want to start? The fact is, low wages is an historical problem in Nigeria, and there are many factors that uh, that that make it that way. One, bad governance, the complex nature of of our politics, of our politics. And, and due to the fact of that uh, we have government that are not actually responsible. And the fact is, uh, as a cost of our political, kind of political uh, development plans that we practice, you know, normally the size of the GDP can actually determine the, the income, the wages in many countries. But in some of the countries, it wasn't like that. Like, for example, in Mozambique, the GDP is about 18 billion era. GDP with a population of 33 million. Yes, it is one of the countries with the highest minimum wages and per capita income in Africa. When it comes to the account the board, there are different policies that govern wages. But the two measurements, the two macroeconomic measurements that government use to decide wages is inflation and consumer price index. In the US, for example, it is the federal government that decides wages. For example, in the year, the you know, you know is about $7.25, but only 20 countries are paying that rate. Most of the countries are paying $15 to $16. This is because in the year, they are paying this Yeah, in the state. Yeah. In the state. Is Tokumba still there? So most of the states, they are not paying the... Can you hear me? Yes, I'm there. Can you hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead to Kumo. So most of the state, they, 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 they are not paying the federal, the, the federal uh, determining wages. They pay more higher because they have, they have state monopoly. They have the practice their own laws and everything. In Canada, most regions determine their wages. But in Europe, the federal, the central government is set the wages, which every state must comply with. And they do that based on the consumer price which, index and inflation. Which are you talking about? The UK. Which Europe are you talking in, in about? In the UK. In the UK. 
when they decide the wages, central wages, everybody has to comply. And what they do is that when it comes to the regional allocation, I just wanted you to correct that slip of tongue. I knew you 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 may have meant the UK, but you said in Europe. Yes, in the UK. Yes, in the UK, many of the European countries, many even in Germany, they have a centralized that is national determined wages, which every state has to comply with. And because in many of these you know, some of these countries, they have state you know, uh, autonomy while the states are involved in many policies. And in any state that in their revenue allocation, in any state that cannot make many up with the national rate, they try to give them more allocation. But in the case of Nigeria, the fact is based on the, the macroeconomic environment, the wages in Nigeria is very low. Household earning is not coping up with household spending. It has been like that since we since the era of, of Asajo. And the push factors, why the why labor are demanding for more today, because of the wrong edit policies of President Tinubu that are linked to the collapse of the macroeconomic variables, high inflation, the collapse of the purchasing power. That was determined for more, and they asked to determine for more. And based, based on the macroeconomic situation in Nigeria, if you, if you are paying, if you are paying, if you decide to put the year at 250 or 200,000 naira, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, it's not, I mean, it's not too low. I mean, it's not, 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 I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, Tokumbo. Don't worry. I'll come back to you. Let me go to Bolo. Bolo, uh, the first point I need to accentuate at this juncture is that, especially for the for the purpose of those who are watching us uh, on the different platforms where uh, this content is going out, and those who are doing. It is a fact that 85 to 90 percent of those who work in Nigeria are not statutorily eligible to earn minimum wage, especially low income earners. 85 to 95 percent of them are not eligible to be captured by the privileges of the minimum wage statute. And the reason is that for an employer to pay minimum wage, that employer must have minimum of 50 workers. I wonder how many employers in Nigeria, individuals, small, medium enterprises, are employed up to 50 workers. That's number one. Number two, many watching us may not know that the generals who initiated the original decree, the original minimum wage decree, let's give it to you, know, let's speak straight now. Somebody like Olusha Gwabasojo as a serving general knew that he was going to retire into agriculture. So the original decree made for minimum wage excluded all agricultural workers. Indeed, when the Shagari government came in the Second Republic, the, the transportation of the decree to a, an act of parliament also reflected the exclusion that the generals had imputed into it. And as we speak, Minimum Wage Act in Nigeria still, still excludes those who work in the agricultural sector where majority of Nigerians work. So I'm talking to the Nigerian intelligence against the Nigerian public. About time we made the Nigerian public to know that 80 to 90 percent of Nigerians working are not even eligible to be captured in the Minimum Wage Act. You know, you're right on the money. Um, a lot of people will not qualify going by the law. But that does not mean that they will not feel the pressure. So I have a, uh, if let's say I have a flatmate who works in, uh, in Guinness. So Guinness employs more than 50 people. So let's say it gets the benefit of a minimum wage adjustment. But 
On the other side, I work for a Papa Mama shop uh, where we are only 10 people there. Uh, and I'm ineligible. But we have the same qualification. So that puts me under pressure. I look to my employer to say, look, my mate, who, you know, who has the same qualification as I am, is already earning this much. How come you are paying me this much? What that creates in the marketplace is it creates unhappy employees who want to earn more because they see what is going on in the market. Now, when they don't get to earn more, they start to either steal or they don't attend to the customers that are supposed to attend to them. So you, the, the, the business is affected indirectly because of what has happened. No, no, no. The other part, no, no. which is very important, is that Hello, when the, Yes. Hello. I want Hello. to factor this. I want you to factor this into the analysis, and that is the fact that the employer, I'm not talking about the employee now, the employee may wish anything he or she, uh, he or she presumes to be fair to himself or herself, but the employer is subject to a fundamental, a fundamental solving entity which is affordability. He, the employer cannot afford to pay, he or she cannot afford to pay. And that may ultimately, indeed, lead to retrenchment and sacking of those who are in employment. 100% I agree 100% with you. I mean, my, my, my wife has employees. And I, I, I remember a couple of days where we were talking about this. And we were saying, look, I cannot afford this. Suppose there is pressure on me to afford. In fact, she already drew up a list of one, two, three people who may have to go if he's put under pressure to pay more than he can afford to pay. She can afford to pay. So those are the realities of the marketplace. Part of the reality is also the fact that some employees are going to get aggrieved because their employer cannot do anything about their wages, and it will trigger inappropriate behavior in the workplace. That is also not contestable. The other facts which I wanted to uh, we must pay attention to is that when those wages increase at the national level and those announcements are made, as those announcements are being made, in fact, on that same day, some people will get a letter of increase in rent that same day, or maybe before the end of the month, to tell you that, look, I heard that you guys are earning more now. Therefore, pay me more too. So that one will come to play. Unfortunately, when the landlord say, you civil servant or you are covered under that minimum wage law, pay me more, it will also affect the guy who unfortunately did not have his own wage increased by virtue of that law. So we must moderate how much uh, we pump cash into the economy via minimum wage and then balance things via fiscal intervention and other kind of intervention that could make it possible. You need to ask the question, okay, if, if I give you this money, what do people use this money for? A very good example is food. Food has become a major, major consumer of our disposable income. People who used to spend 30% of their income on food are now spending 80% on food. So rather than pour the cash into uh, some, some gargantuan uh, uh, minimum wage, can you intervene in food? So when you intervene in food and the price of food comes down, so the guy is able to have more purchasing power for one of the things that carry the bulk of his money away. If we don't balance those things and we just pump the cash. Bella, Bella, let, me go to, let me go to your colleagues. Uh, you have really uh, reached I reached the discussion with some of the points you have proceeded. Uh, I, I must say, but let, let me go and play the devil's advocate with uh, with uh, Taiwo. Taiwo, from the get go, it does seem that you are not uh, you are not in bed with labor. You believe that they are a bit melodramatic, they are a bit delusional in what they are asking for. But Taiwo, in today's Nigeria. As a Nigerian living in Nigeria, Taiwo, 
if you do a cursory back of the envelope analysis of what it entails, irrespective of the level of education of the person you are calculating uh, the living wage for, that will, what would be the reasonable wage rate that you will suggest to be for a man who has little or no education, is an unskilled laborer, but at the end of the day, is still a homo sapien that is compelled to, to eat the Maslow's law of needs. You know, uh, the person will need to feed, the person will need to, to be housed, the person will need to clothe him or herself. What Taiwo would you suggest? to be what you believe is reasonable in today's Nigeria. Let's okay. leave labor out of it. I know, okay. I know the labor leaders seem to have exasperated you, but I'm, I'm talking <laughs> to talk about the economics now and the reality. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you, you have pushed me to a particular angle, uh, and that angle is, uh, I'm not sure it's uh, within 360, but let's, let's work with the 360 angle that you have given me. As of today, let's have... 100,000 as minimum wage. Now, why do I say 100,000 as minimum wage? If you are to get a one-room apartment in Lagos, don't even go to one-room apartment. If you are to go to, you, get a, you need a shop in Lagos, for instance. You need minimum of 600,000. Agency and agreement, 600K per annum for a shop. You need a one room apartment. You are looking for between four hundred to five hundred thousand annually. So what does that mean? If you are giving a civil servant minimum hundred k by twelve months, so what does that mean? You are talking about one point two million. So out of one point two million, he or she is ready to pay house rent of six hundred thousand. So the remaining six hundred thousand. So can we divide that six hundred thousand? by 12 all right that will give us how much purchasing power each of the civil servant is having at hand so anything that is short of hundred thousand era as of today will not fly for an average uh civil servant or an average worker in nigeria but beyond that don't also forget that there is always an angle an average financial or economic analyst we always go to and that is the angle of what consumer price index the angle of inflation you can't do anything without your knowledge the capacity of your knowledge is the capacity of your disposition so what is happening to our inflation we are talking about 33.7 percent so what does that mean if you have been given 100k that means i'm telling you already 40,000 error, inflation has taken it away from you already. That is what it means. So, I'm not too comfortable with all of these bogus figures. Here and there, they will bring it together. It's not about the figures. What is the alternative? What is happening to the import duties? And now somebody is bringing a car of 3 million, and he's paying the import duty of 5 million. Is that not economic mm -hmm. madness? Can't you reduce the import duties? So, so, Taiwo, so, Taiwo. So, with your question, I will say that no, pay hundred thousand. Then let's find a way to fight the inflation. Hello, Taiwo. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. Uh, it does seem that even your your suggestion of hundred thousand is conflicted with the profound reasoning that you have given, which is more of an indictment of the of the methodology of governance of our economy. And that can never be the fault of the worker. That is the fault of the leadership. Because if they were to have their acts right, from what you have stated, inflation would not be a terroristic phenomenon that it is now economically in Nigeria. If they had had their acts together, there would have been enough productivity. There would have been enough productivity to stem the the uh, uh, the incessant demand for for wage increase. 
I will come back to you. Be, be, be thinking about that. Let me go. Let me go to your colleague in London. Uh, That's a good uh, 360 degree again. You are gone. <laughs> I will come back to you. Uh, <laughs> Tokumbo. It's Tokumbo. I like yeah. the way you started. You started by alluding to uh, what prevails in the rest of America where federal government has uh, minimum wage legislation that speaks to seven point something dollars. I am also aware of that. And like you rightly stated, to Kumbo, many of the states in the rest of America pay far more than the seven dollar minimum. In fact, I, I, I have news for you. I think recently, not more than say two months or three months ago, uh, minimum wage too was increased in America to about say 13 or 14 dollars. But most states, like Valley State, pay far more than that. State of California being the district. And you also rightly stated that in Canada, which is also a federation, there is no minimum wage to legislation per se, but the the provinces they pay they pay as they can afford. Because that is how organic federation works. Now, Tokumbo, we are in a situation in Nigeria that we have a history of minimum wage legislation that the fed that a sizable percentage of the federating units don't even respect. They don't honor. We are we are we have now created a very dystopic, a very dystopic le legislative environment in Nigeria where the minimum wage the minimum wage act is like a super force legislation that some state just choose to uh, uh, to hit or not honor. Uh, Tokumbo, you are somebody that lives in a country where the rule of law is respected. How would you then want to analyze how would you want to analyze the fact that those agitating for more than 30,000 naira that some states cannot even pay now, maybe asking, maybe waiting for God out. Tokumbo. Thank you, your response. As I said earlier, there are many factors why why you can actually. I mean, let me start with if we if we base if we base on determining the minimum wage based on the key factors that lead to determine the consumer price index and the inflation rate. I mean, we talk about, as my colleagues have already said, it's even more than 100,000, only 2 to 400,000 naira. But let, let me go to that 50 part that some labor are not proposing. Okay, they, they were talking about 250,000 naira. As we would take, we should make it at 250,000 naira monthly. Okay, this, the fact is, states in Nigeria, they are not independent. They depend on federal allocation. Look at, I mean, let's, I mean they get away from the federal government. Look, let me give you an example of data tip, for example. The, the data is about 4.1 million population. And according to the Nigerian Bureau, the statistic, they will get about 564 billion naira this year. Look at the Benin state. In Benin state, there are 4.2 million population. They will get about 120 billion naira. If you put it to 250 thousand naira per million wage, it will get if they have decided to pay. It is obvious that the Benin will not be able to pay that. So, as my colleagues have rightly said, the point is not just about raising the interest rate, I mean, raising the minimum wage, it's about stabilizing macroeconomies. So, I mean, in addition to adjusting the interest rate, I mean, the minimum wage, government should put on adopt macroeconomic policies that would stabilize the, the, the macroeconomic variables. I mean, more, to stabilize the inflation, create price stability. And in, 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 in above all, I think the policy of President Tinubu by floating the rate is the main problem why the government is facing some of the problems we are facing today. They need to reverse those policies. That is what I don't feel because I mean, such as I, I would love you to be more specific. So, which policies are you talking about? Nigeria could not afford to adopt a floating rate regime. According to the according to the CBN last year, uh, last month, the CBN was able to provide six point six percent of the forest needed for a currency market. Me, when you are adopting a floating rate regime, is that you have sufficient liquidity to stabilize the currency, to stabilize the currency market. 
which are not really the case. We need to peg the currency. When you peg the currency, everybody will be trading on the government rate. That will stabilize, that will create currency stability. And I mean, make sure that the inflation is not skyrocketed as it is today. We need to reverse those policies. They, they are not working. Look, okay. When President Barry became president in, in 2015, the, the rate was pegged at 198 to one, to one US dollar. When it's living in 2023, it, it, it was pegged at 460, something like that. Today, it is about 1,500 because we are operating a floating rate regime. And there's no policy the CBEC will implement that will radically lead to the claim of the US dollar. We need to peg the rate, we need to okay. dollarize the economy. Okay. We, uh, okay, your point is well understood. Uh, your 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 point too, if I may uh, do a, a synopsis of your point, also speaks to what may be said to be say incompetence on the side of the managers of the economy or sheer uh, loss of direction on the side of the of managers of the economy. Uh, but uh, um. You have not quite addressed, I'll come back to you later, but you have not quite addressed the fact that the minimum wage legislation in Nigeria is also fast becoming a melodrama that at, at the end of which many of the states that are supposed to honor the law, many of them don't honor the law and that seems to me and that was why i was teasing you and as somebody who lives in a rule of law respecting polity like the uk what does that amount to with you but let me go to bala on the day now bala on the day uh your wisdom as usual i must say uh, I, I always find you very engaging when when i'm having you uh guesting on uh, plus politics well, uh, we are where we are now, but we must not only lambaste the government, we must not only castigate labor for being a bit detached from reality. Uh, some people like you, especially the three of you who are trained, who are trained economics, you must be putting ideas on the table. Well, uh, on day, what are the ideas that you may want to put on the table now? to resolve this seemingly uh, dystopic scenario that is building. Labor is asking for what seems reasonable. Government, we have a tripartite party within a tripartite committee. Many people don't realize that. We have federal government, state government, local government as a tripartite party. In a tripartite committee discussing minimum wage, where you have organized labor and you have organized private sector, OPS. So, Balao, what would be the idea you want to put on the table to bring about the equilibrium? I think the best way to approach this is for labor to be willing to um, agree on a moderate increase. I don't think there is any country in the world, and I stand to be corrected, where you can increase minimum wage, but because even at 250,000, that would be like over 700% increase. I don't think that you can go by 700% uh, uh, increase in the UK or US or Canada or anywhere in the world, because there are consequences for pumping money out when there is no increase in supply of goods and services. You are, what you have done is that you have created a demand for which there is no increase in supply. The automatic effect is inflation. So therefore, let's have a moderate increase in minimum wage, and then government must commit to intervening in the other side. I'll give you an example. Pick up the inflation curve of Nigeria. There's one on the CPM website or, or the, uh, the, the raw statistics. You will see that clearly the number one driver of the inflation curve is the food inflation. What that says automatically is that if I can do something about food, I will moderate that inflation curve as it were today. In fact, if I sustainably deal with food, 
that inflation curve that has been going up, I will succeed in inflexing that curve at a point in time. We have also have an energy. So all those promises that government is required, that was a so, so if you look at that leaked memo, some of those contents, if implemented properly, we actually help to moderate that food inflation, which is way above the headline inflation in itself. If I can, if I don't have to go to the market to buy four pieces of atarodo for for five hundred naira or, or, or for two hundred naira, then my problem is getting solved gradually, and my need for that humongous cash is starts to moderate. So let's balance it: a moderate increase in minimum wage. Be, Put side by okay. side with intervention in other areas to lower the inflation. Okay, okay, okay. Well, now, I'll come back to you for a wrap up. Uh, this is your penultimate contribution. I'll come back to you for a wrap up. Uh, Taiwo, I, I left you a little to be to be solved the last time I engaged with you. Uh, about time you then uh, you gave your response, Taiwo. Yeah, well, the read do. Yeah, the read again. Uh, but, uh, the read uh, Okay, okay. Let, 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 because you said that I'm going to another time too. I, I don't want to be putting you alone in that corner. So, what would be your suggestion to to the parties? Uh, we have, like I said, we have a tripartite party within a tripartite committee, and uh, within the context of the. Of the challenges and the audiences and the and the uh, politics of each of these parties, you know, uh, we still have to have a solution. And I trained the economist. You must put an idea on the table. I can't just let you uh, go without taking something from you to bless Nigeria. That's a very good uh, question for a, a nation that is uh, economically bleeding as of today. We have a lot of resources that we are living on top and we are chasing economic shadows. Is it possible that we have 774 local governments in Nigeria? Can you give me 10 acres of land, agricultural farm land, in all the 774 local governments? So that for me in Lagos, I will not need to wait for the old woman coming from Ogun State before I can get my Gary. Because if she's coming from Ondo State, if she buy it at 2000 or 1000 at Ondo State, 3000 will be will be our cost of transportation. So why can't I get the Gary at my backyard in Lagos? So that that 3000 will be out of the figure. And I'm, and I'm listening to you, Taro, and I'm thinking... Does Taiwo realize that beyond land, modern agriculture for it to be sustainable and profitable has to be mechanized? Individuals and most private uh, uh, agricultural uh, culture practitioners in Nigeria can afford uh, the seemingly high rate of mechanization. Does Taiwo know there is no that talent that, in agriculture? It is civilization that is making us to be. Theoretical in economic analysis, there are thousands of solutions to the Nigerian problem. If you have, take for instance what Governor Babajide Sawulu is doing in Lagos State, are you, are you aware that it's possible to have that kind of food chain in every local government in Lagos State? But nobody was thinking about it in the last five years, in the last ten years. How come it's not sustainable? So there's nothing like having agricultural insustainability. There's nothing impossible in the, in the agricultural chain of market. Okay. Everything is possible. Intentionality. Intentionality from the government. Intentionality from the practitioners. Intentionality from the okay. farmers. Taiwo. 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 You can get food to point. every nation. Taiwo. Taiwo. You have made your point. You have made your point forcefully and articulately enough. Let me quickly go to Tukumo so that I'll go, I'll go around again for your closing remarks. Uh, Tukumo. Uh, I, I, I must also push you in the direction of suggestion. Your colleagues have proceeded uh, wonderful ideas, whichever one looks at it. Uh, uh, Gwela Olojede believes that the 
the most debilitating uh, inflationary phenomenon today in Nigeria is food inflation. That is it's statistically right, is uh, analytically right. So if the food inflation could be could be lesser than not. And Taiwan came now and said, you know what? Let's democratize agricultural productivity. Uh, that's the best, my best understanding of what I was saying. Irrespective of whatever may be my interjection, he has made his point on the door. Uh, Dokumo, why, where do you stand on uh, profiling solutions? Not only. So, I, I also totally, I totally agree, Mr. Uh, 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 Bola and uh, my other colleagues, that if you must address this problem, in addition to adjusting the interest rate, I mean, the. Uh, the minimum wage moderately because if you go for big wages, men say you're not going to pay. I mean, many, I mean, many organizations are going to pay. And I have to do that. I want to stabilize the macroeconomies. We need, I mean, look at Nigeria for example, just by the fact that we have ecological resources, we have human resources, we have land resources. Only 20% of Nigeria have food security. And who will blame the government? We need to, we need to radically reform our agricultural sectors. I think that's why about that about 40 of the labor, labor force and the agriculture. But they are old farmers. They lack basic knowledge, the modern knowledge on farming. We need to involve Nigerian youth in that sector. That will, I mean, I mean, that will, that will make a lot of changes. As an in incentivize the youth, not only with capital, but mechanization. Mechanization, funding, training, and everything. Yes. The capital uh, will be tied to capital so better off. By involving in agriculture and go for the the, the, the the monthly job they are looking for, they can be better. Or yes, Kokumbo. Yes, Kokumbo. I thought I thought I could go around the three of you for closing remarks, but let's just take it at this juncture because we are very deep into the time. Uh, let's just take it that we wrap we we wrap up. I would say thank you to you gentlemen. You are always a delight to have, especially as uh, a tripartite combo. This is not the time, but I can never say uh, party number <laughs> six. I'm not to judge about you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where we wrap it up for today. It's, we are very happy that to have you uh, with us. I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening.